Okay, we're underneath the uh, hood the, in the engine compartment of a 1970 Chevelle, a real SS car. Uh, there's no question this car is a real SS. It does not have a numbers matching engine in it, but it's also priced accordingly. Oval port motor, Edelbrock aluminum intake manifold, Carter carburetor on it. Uh, it is a 454. We're assuming it's at least that. I don't know the exact configuration. It's a big block. It started life as a 454. Could be a 468, a 496. Who knows? At any rate, it runs really strong. It's a good run, good running uh, big block Chevy. It has a set of uh, aftermarket, uh, good wrench uh, Chevy valve pan covers on it, aluminum. It has an Edelbrock aluminum intake manifold with K&N air filter in it, chrome alternator bracket, new alternator, polished alternator. Uh, this motor has been completely gone through and, and freshened up. It has a uh, aluminum timing chain cover on it, new water pump, just freshly painted. A huge set of ceramic coated headers on it. They are at least two and an eighth inch, at least. They might even be two and a quarter. I'm going to call them two and an eighth inch uh, ceramic headers, long tube to let this guy breathe the way it should. And again, with these oval port heads, you know, this thing's going to make a lot of mid-range power. So you, you've got at least an, like an LS5 uh, drivetrain in this thing. Huge big block radiator for this guy to keep it cool has power steering, it has power disc brakes in the front, new master cylinder, dual stage, new uh, booster for the uh, master cylinder, brand new battery, high silicone plug wires, uh, HEI distributor which is also new, it looks like a uh, billet distributor, probably an MSD system. I don't see anything in this uh, engine compartment that's uh, not right just the way it should be. Fender wells on the inside are semi-flat black, the way they were from the factory. The hood's been painted gloss underneath. It has the um, sound dender insulation still in it. And by the way, this is a real functioning cowl induction hood. So if you wanted to eliminate this air cleaner and put a <coughs> cowl induction air cleaner that seals up to here, you would have a functional cowl induction system on it. So you can make this car look like a real bona fide cowl inducted LS5 or an LS6 actually just from looking at the engine. Uh, put a set of chrome valve fan covers on it and that air cleaner and it would look just the way it came from the factory. Right now it has more of a custom look to it, a more of a custom effect. A little cleaner without that cowl induction air cleaner on it and just a small 14 inch with the uh, um, K&N filter in it. No leaks evident whatsoever. Um, and you can see the engine is all fresh. Everything's just been uh, completely done over. Uh, it's all fresh paint of uh, Chevy orange on it. Uh, the block you can see is nice and clean, so it's been tanked and completely done. This motor's been done from top to bottom from what I can see. Fantastic engine compartment in this guy. There's no, uh, uh, no dents or marks or anything on the uh, radiator core support. So it's never been bumped in the nose for any reason. The correct style fan shroud on it and does have a uh, seven blade flex fan. There is a seven blade flex fan on it. Um, great engine compartment. Um, new windshield wiper motor also and usually where there's these plastic pieces missing in the uh, cowl area, those are all intact just the way they should be. Someone has taken the care to replace them. Fantastic engine compartment, tons of torque, lots of horsepower. Everybody's favorite, big block uh, 70 Chevelle. Let's go around the rest of it. Hi, you're Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida, and we got another really neat, neat car for you uh, on the floor today. Um, kind of everybody's favorite, one of the favorites anyway in the muscle car world is a uh, 70 Chevelle SS. It is a real SS. Um, fantastic color combination, one of my favorite combinations on this car anyway. It really looks good in a uh, black and white uh, tuxedo type uh, attire here. But let's go over it and we'll show you everything we can on it. Hood fitment to the front fender, you can see that in the video, it is right on. It's an eighth of an inch the whole way around. Couldn't fit any better than it does. Same way done on this side. This side here is a little bit closer, but a little less than an eighth of an inch, but again, there's 
no way that you're going to adjust it any better. It's well within production standards. Paint on the car is very, very nice. It, uh, mm -hmm. The black has no denser deviations in it. There's no marks or scratches whatsoever on it. Of course, the white really accentuates the whole, the whole car. You can see the uh, cowl induction flap open. There's no vacuum holding it right now. So uh, that's normal for that to not uh, be closed. As soon as you fire the car up, it closes. When it loses vacuum, it pops open again. The fit and the finish on this thing is really, really fantastic. Of course, you've got the standard wood pins that they all have. Headlight basils. There's no patina. They look like they're original basils too. They're very, very good condition. Absolutely fantastic condition. Anodized aluminum surrounds on the grill area. No marks, no stone chips. Plastic grill, no marks or chips out of it either. Alignment of the front bumper. And that baby is right on the money. Really right on the money. SS designation in the front, Chevrolet. Uh, genuine uh, Chevrolet in the front. Uh, parking lights are uh, uh, clear as opposed to amber. Nice crystal clear ones on it. The uh, chrome on the front bumper has no chips or marks or dinghies whatsoever in it from stones being thrown up through the years. And thankfully, no one has put their foot up on the top of it. There's no marks or scuffs or distress whatsoever on the chrome. The front of this vehicle is as nice as you'll ever, ever find one. You know, it's very repetitive. I keep going over these cars and telling you how nice they are. But I also pick out a lot of irregularities, too. And so far on this one, this baby is spot on. Let's get down aside. Maybe we'll find something there. Okay, driver's side of our 70 Chevelle SS car. Uh, well, I'm looking for anything I can find in this paint, and I can't find anything. No marks or chips or scuffs or deviations, absolutely nothing. Side marker light fitment, absolutely spot on. Wheel, wheel well molding, no dents from somebody throwing a door open on it. Of course, an SS 454 designation, because that's what this guy is. Look at the door to the front fender, too. Totally amazing. Trim around the front window. Really nice. There's no marks whatsoever on it. Correct wiper arms and blades. They're tucked down under. They're hard to see, but uh, correct wiper arms and blades. Cowl induction designation on the hood because that's what this guy is. Tinted glass, sunshade fade on the top of it. Definitely a tinted windshield. Really clean where the, the uh, dashboard transitions onto the base of the uh, a windshield. There's no deviations or marks or, or cracks whatsoever on the padded dash in this guy either. And where the uh, dash transitions, it's crystal clean. It cannot be any cleaner and nicer uh, than it is. Someone's taken uh, the time to go in and clean that or detail it to where it, it has absolutely no dirt or no uh, age whatsoever on the uh, rubber part on the base of the windshield. Correct style mirror for 1970. The roof, we never find anything on the roof. Uh, there's no marks or chips or anything falling on it through the years. The paint is just wet glass smooth. Down the uh, side of the drip rail, just as nice as you'd ever want to find. Look at the window fitment on this guy. We always have the windows up now to show you how the windows fit. Look at this. The front window to the rear glass. It cannot get any better. By the way, this is tinted also. Seals right up here. You could stand here with a garden hose and try to get water in this car and you wouldn't be able to. Uh, the wipes, the window wipes, and the rubber part where it transitions onto the quarter, and the door, just as nice as can be. I can't even get my thumbnail underneath any of it. The fitment is absolutely spot on. Door to the rocker panel. This door got to go in a little bit. It's Has to go in, needs adjusted. <clears throat> it's out just a little bit too far. Door edge guards, and it looks like the uh, original style that GM used the stainless steel. Handle, handle. Chrome is spot on, it couldn't be any nicer than it is. Wheel lip molding in the back, no marks, no chips whatsoever. And 
you could hear it. That's tin everywhere. There's no bondo whatsoever in the field, in the wheel lips, or um, on the quarter panels. Sail panel. You can't tell anything where the roof and the sail panel have been put together. The quarter panel, just as nice as you ever want to find. Hat rack is new. It has the correct uh, speaker type uh, holes from underneath. If you look, you can see them. Trim around the rear light, which is also tinted too. Uh, no marks whatsoever. Really nice fitment, the way it fits onto the uh, body uh, around the back window. Side marker in the back, just as nice as you ever want to find. And that's it. That's the whole driver's side. 15 inch rally wheels. Uh, they look like they're about 8 inches in the back. And I'm going to call them 7 in the front. They're 7's in the front, 8's in the back. Got some serious rubber on the back of it. BFG's on it. Uh, everybody's choice of a tire right now in these vehicles. The side of this car is really exemplary. Of course, the door needs adjusted a little bit in. We did find that. But down the side of this car is just as nice and straight. And the paint is just exemplary on it. A very, very nice. Uh, a finish on the car. Other than that door adjust, that's the only thing we found so far, but we're still looking, so let's go out back see if we can find something there. Okay, tail section of our 70 Cheval SS car. Look at this. Just like the hood. It doesn't get any better than that. And it doesn't need tightened down. It lines up flawlessly. Look. Cheval by Chevrolet. And again, the stripes and the fillet and finish on this car is just beautiful, just absolutely stunning. Still haven't found a stone chip, a scratch, a mark, or a dent. Absolutely nothing. Chrome on the back bumper, the same as it was on the front. There's no scratches or anything on it from people dragging stuff out of the trunk. Tail lights, the lenses are just as clear as you'd ever want to find. The, the argent area around them is nice and clean yet. Same on this side, same way. This is really the prettiest of all these Chevelles, the, the back end with this SS piece of rubber bumper on the back of it and the tail light assembly set in the way they are. So much nicer than the uh, uh, 71, 72 era cars. And that's why they bring a lot more money too. Chrome on the back bumper and fitment. Somebody spent some time on this guy. Front bumper, back bumper, everything other than that door need adjusted. That's this thing is just right on the money. Rear volance fits just the way it should. There's no pulls or dents or anything in it. Paint on it's really, really nice. Uh, twin exhaust extensions just the way they were from Chevrolet in 1970. Uh, stainless steel oval coming out the back. There's absolutely enough to tell you negative on this guy. Okay, one more side, see so if you can find something there. Okay, our last side, passenger side of our 70 SS Chevelle. Again, side marker light, really nice fitment in the rear. Just tin everywhere. There's no evidence of Bondo or anything ever being uh, put up in the fender wells or the uh, rear quarter drop downs. Trim around the back window on this side just as it was on the other side. Just as nice as can be. Just missed above. Sail panel the same as the other side. Wheel with molding. Absolutely no dents whatsoever. This thing survived the uh, shopping uh, mall lots for a while. Now this door is right on the money. It can't fit any better than it does. That one needs adjusted. This one does not. It's spot on. Chrome on the door handle on this side, same as the other side. Absolutely brand new. Window wipes, whiskers. And the drip rail molding is absolutely flawless. Again, check this window fitment. Look. It can't get any better than what you see there. It just can't. Perfect seal up around the top. Right hand mirror. Excellent addition to the car. Every one of these cars should have a right hand mirror on it. But a lot of them, they didn't come with them, so uh, unless they're on there, we don't usually add them unless the customer prefers that we do add a right hand mirror for them, which we will. 
little tiny bit of patina on this mirror. Little tiny bit, not much. So it's probably an original mirror to the car, and it may have been installed as an option from the factory. Trim around the front window on this side. Again, the wiper, arms and blades correct. Front door, see the paint on the door. To the rocker panel. Tell you what, the fitment on this car is really good. Very, very good. Front fender to the door. SS454, ah, loose. We have to tighten that emblem up. No door dinghies. Front marker light. And we're back where we started. So you watch me go over this entire car. We try to do this uh, as efficiently and, and as precisely as we can, you know, in the, in the time allotted. We can't give you an hour presentation. Um, we're up over 30, 35 minutes now for these presentations on the cars. But this entire vehicle, we went around, no chips, no marks, no dings. That door needs adjusted, needs pulled in, which is no big deal. This guy needs tightened up. This rattles a little bit. Tires are all nice and fat on the car. You've got a great set of uh, tall hat uh, centers on it. Um, you know, the, the car is just an absolutely beautiful car. Has a white interior, white uh, stripes on it, black car. Uh, nice designation in white uh, SS all around the car, just the way it should be. Uh, the car runs, and we'll take you on a little joy ride here with it. But uh, I used the car for a couple days, which is what I try to do with every one of these cars that we get in here. I take them out, and I'm not kind to them. I take them out, and I, I run these things the way we did back in the you know, 60s and 70s. And uh, right now I'm driving a 383 Stroker uh, Nova that we just traded, a 71 car. And a um, couple little issues with it, you know, typical things, speedometer doesn't work. But we try to go through these cars and we try to pick out everything that needs to be addressed in it. And uh, we, we, I think we do a pretty good job on it, you know, occasionally we miss something. I try to make sure that when I go around a car, if there's an imperfection, I point it out. Once you saw the door and you saw that. Now, who would even point that out to you that that's loose? We did. Um, this car is available at Hankster's in Daytona Beach, Florida. We've only got two of these at this point. This one and a, uh, a blue one that we have with a uh, 502 in it, in a three-pedal car, four-speed. But the, these cars are just iconic in the muscle car world. And if you're a Chevy guy, it's, it's either going to be a 67 Chevelle or it's going to be a 70 Chevelle. And that guy is a 70, it's a definite big block, it's a definite 454 or bigger, uh, 12 volt, it's a real SS car, uh, automatic, I'm going to show you the interior. We encourage everybody to come down and look at these cars. Everybody should jump on a bird and come down because this is one of 75 or 80 that we have here on display and for sale. I know we only have about 45 of them up on the site, but Devin and I are trying our very best to get these all videoed. And um, it takes about five hours for us to do one car. So you get an idea, you know, once we have an influx and, and we're doing 20 cars a month. So, you know, do the math. It takes us a long time to get these up. And we're starting to fall behind pretty dramatically on it. But we encourage everybody to come down and look at these cars in person. That way you get a chance to put it up on a rack and touch it and feel it and drive it and hear it and spend all day going over the car so you know exactly what you're getting. But if you can't, that's why we're doing these videos as, as uh, uh, long as we can to show you every little tiny thing that we can pick, pick out uh, imperfection-wise. I try not to miss anything, but if I do, I apologize. That's why we want you to come down and take a look. Maybe you'll see something that I didn't. Hangster, stay Daytona Beach. Okay, this is the interior of our tuxedo black and white 1970 SS Chevelle. Again, the... Um, Pat a dash in it. There's no cracks or marks or deviations whatsoever in it. Nice uh, clear gauge package on it. Uh, tachometer, speedometer, uh, clock that isn't working. Um, and you got your standard gauges on it. However, there are a tree of, of auxiliary gauges underneath the dash. You have actual oil pressure, water temperature, and voltage so that you can read them aftermarket radio in it but they didn't hack the dashboard up I can still see the original where the knobs go and the radio face for the original style radio that um, uh, would go in this car it has a uh, cassette player in it which 
I don't even know if they make cassettes anymore. They probably don't. Uh, so what I would do is put a standard radio in this car that belongs in it and then put your CD in the uh, glove compartment where everybody does. Glove compartment. How about the light? The light still works in it too. Another glove box here in the uh, console, center console, the correct staple shifter that uh, belongs in the car. And the um, uh, Prindle on it, real nice and clean and clear. The um, chrome on the console, just as fresh as you'd ever want to hope to find. Really nice center console in this car. Interior is just exemplary. It is the absolute exact duplication of, I want to call it new interior. I can't imagine this could be the original. It would have been yellowed a lot by this point, but it could be. It's, it's hard to say with these cars. It does have the original molded headrests in it. These aren't the sewn type. These are the original mold, molded style headrests. Check the price on those if you try to buy one. The back seat the same way as the front seat. It matches perfectly. The vinyl on is just flawless. Uh, armrests in the back, trash trays in them just the way they had back then, uh, new door or door handles. Uh, window cranks on the uh, rear. The side panels have absolutely no wear whatsoever or any sun fade or cracking at all in them, neither one. Uh, it has a full complement of seat belts on it, front seat belts and rear seat belts and shoulder belts. Uh, sun visors are really nice. The stitching's coming loose on this one here. Gonna have to run it up to Dale and have him uh, sew that one. This one too. Gonna have to hit him, hit both of them. They just need to be sewn again. Stitching comes loose. I think it just deteriorates with age. There's a little tiny, tiny hole right here and one about a thumb size right here, a thumbnail size. So we had a mouse up there at one point building a hotel. Um, Certainly not enough that you would ever replace this headliner because the headliner is very nice and, and taunt in it. It, it. It's very nice except for those two little tiny imperfections. They're right at the sun visor, so you're really not going to even see them. And certainly nothing that we're going to go ahead and, and uh, uh, replace. Operational uh, dome light in it. Loop pile carpeting just the way it would be in 1970 for this guy. Armrests in the front of the, on the doors, just as nice as you'd ever hope to find. Door actuators, the chrome on it is nice. By the way, the armrests do have the original molded type pads on them for your elbows, so those are original also. The, um, again, the window cranks in the front are also new to match the ones in the back. And the reason I say new is because the um, <coughs> plastic knobs uh, with age, they'll turn to a, like a golden yellow color, and these aren't. These are still crystal clear um, plastic, so these guys are new. Someone's replaced them. The chrome arm's just exemplary. Uh, the whole dashboard layout is very, very nice. All new rubbers in it. You know what? I'm not. This is the original rubber that came on this door, and it's still good. This has been replaced. This is new rubber here. The door rubbers are the original ones, but they're in excellent condition. They're still resilient, and they don't need to be replaced. So you have some originality there. It gives you an idea of how well this car was taken care of through the years. Astro ventilation system still intact and functional. All your pull knobs or cables are still functional on it, just the way they would be. Wow, I can't, I can't see anything in this car that's a negative. Absolutely nothing. It has a ton of originality to it. Um, I can't really, I can't really tell you whether this is new or original uh, interior in this car, but at any rate, it absolutely does not need any attention whatsoever. Fantastic condition, just fantastic. Uh, great looking car. Oh, steering wheel. Uh, the SS steering wheel that was standard, still SS designation in the center, and guess what? No, cr yep. I was going to say no cracks. No, that's not a crack. That's a scratch. There's a little tiny scratch right here. That's it. This is as nice an interior as you would ever hope to find in one of these early muscle cars. It just doesn't get any better than this. Fantastic color combination. Take a look at this guy. Tuxedo black and white. Okay, let's see what we got here. Um, horn. We got a horn that does not blow. Another thing we have to fix, I know we have to adjust that one door, but we definitely got to get a warrant of blows. 
unless you want to roll down a window and show obscene gestures. That's your other alternative there. Um, but we are going to fix the horn. Okay, wipers. Wipers work. Just the way they should. Okay, radio. I don't know about radios. I don't know how it works. Okay, gauges. Uh, we have an oil pressure gauge, we have a temp gauge, and we have a voltmeter. So these are functioning as they should. The temperature's starting to go up. Uh, everything uh, working as it should there. Turn signals, left turn signal, just beating itself to death there. The right turn signal, not showing us anything. I don't know if it's working outside or not. That's Donnie, he'll figure it out. But we got a horn we have to fix, the door we have to adjust. Other than that, we'll find out. Tachometer is working. Tachometer is working, and I'm sure the speedometer will be here in a second. Let's go for a little ride, see how this guy runs. It's a nice running car. Let's got to get up past this little grade here. We'll let go of the steering wheel and see if uh, there. No hands on the wheel. We're going down the road straight as an arrow. I still haven't touched the wheel. All right. Let's see. Brakes, no hands. Stops right down. Nice tight running car. The is working as it should. Going down the road here, you can see the tag is working. And our instruments are working. The temperature's holding nice on it. It's warmed up now. Nice car. I drove this thing for a few days. I like this. You talk me into this guy. Car pulls just like it should. The uh, air induction uh, part of the hood opens up. Just like it should. Uh, shifts nice and crisp and clean just the way it should. Goes down the road straight, got a great sound to it, a nice exhaust, not objectionably loud, uh, drives straight, stop straight, does everything it's supposed to, and black with white stripes and white interior. How much better does it get than that? Unless you like red, but this is really a nice little car, black with white stripes. I like this thing. Like I say, I used this car for about three days. I really couldn't find anything wrong with it other than the brake, which we have to adjust. A bunch of little things. These videos are done for us as well as for you guys. We're showing you everything that we know that's wrong with the car that has to be addressed. And we're not going to tell you every car is perfect and doesn't need anything because before this car gets shipped, these things have to be addressed. That door has to be adjusted. That light's going to have to work. Obviously, we've got to have a park brake working for you. And other than that, I don't know radio we don't care about um, but the rest of this thing is just as nice to drive a car as you'd ever hope to find okay this is the undercarriage of our 1970 uh, real SS tuxedo black and white Chevelle really neat car uh, it has a newer set of shocks in the front has your discs in the front the rotors are nice and clean on it the calipers are nice and fresh looking uh, the hardware is Original style hardware, but it looks like it's in great condition. Heavy duty F41 style sway bar in the front, long tube headers in the uh, engine compartment. They look like they're going to be about a, I don't know, they're going to at least two, a two inch, maybe two and an eighth inch uh, primary tubes on it. Three and a half inch collector, full box frame that transitions on to a uh, C channel frame on the side of these uh, Chevelles. Um, no leaks on the uh, power steering pump. You can see the engine has been out completely done, completely refreshed and installed. The stock uh, equipment starter on it. it is not a gear reduction starter. Uh, also take note that there are no leaks on the engine or the uh, uh, bell housing area. There's a little tiny bit of dampness on the uh, oil pan. I don't know, it might have been from uh, oil being changed. It looks like the gasket is fresh on it, so I'm sure it had the screen changed in it. Uh, let's see. Original brake lines heading toward the rear, just as you would expect. 
the C channel is nice. There's a couple of jack marks on the, uh, the C channel frame, one toward the back. There's one right there, there's one there, there's one there. Uh, there's one there, one there. We'll probably straighten those. Uh, we'll get our big old three foot crescent wrench and give them a tweak down. The original brake lines heading toward the rear of the vehicle. Uh, still have the wire winding on them. Original 3 8 inch fuel line going toward the back also. Uh, no leaks on the tranny other than a little dampness here, which uh, I think that's just for changing the uh, screen. The uh, tail shaft has no leaks whatsoever on it. The floors are totally undisrupted, uh, from what I can see here anyway. There's, uh, uh, there's no jack marks whatsoever. Take that back. Somebody put a jack here and tried to jack it on the floor and bedded it. The uh, structural pieces underneath the floor pans themselves are nice. Had it just moved over six inches and put it on that structural piece, it would have dented it, but it does have a dent there. The, uh, the pans are the original pans from what I can see anyway. They uh, uh, don't appear to have ever been replaced. The uh, pipes, these are two and a quarter going back into two flow master mufflers. So you got a three and a half collector transitioning into a two and a two and a half. Yeah, I call them two and a half pipes with an H pipe uh, crossover on it into uh, two Flowmaster mufflers. Parking brake assembly is here. It's a little funky. We're missing a, a piece of uh, the parking brake that allows it to pull on it from that. So this needs a, uh, it's a little arm that comes out and holds this thing intact. That has to be fixed, which obviously we're going to do. This is the first I've been underneath this car. I did take the car and drive it for a while, so I know how it runs. And this thing rips. It's a nice, strong car. I drove it for a few days, and uh, there's really no issues with it other than the parking brake not working. We do that before we put it up in the air. Um, let's see. F41 suspension. The um, boxed-in swing arms in the back, just the way it would be for an F41. Also, the rear sway bar that attaches to the swing arms with the F41 suspension. Box parts of the uh, frame sections that were transitions off of the C channel back into the box frame and then back into the C channel again. Uh, that's all undisrupted. The uh, structural piece that goes across the uh, um, top of the frame is in excellent condition. Uh, there's no deterioration whatsoever. It does have a set of uh, uh, conventional shocks in the back. They're not new, but they're, they're not completely. They're not messed up at all. They look like they've been changed at some point in their life, obviously, but they're, they're in excellent condition. Drum brakes in the rear, uh, fin, fin drums, heavy duty, original gas tank. There's a dent, one punch mark right here in the gas tank. Again, some idiot jacked it up. You can see what happened. He jacked it up on the subframe in the back, and then the uh, effort of doing that put some of the jack onto the gas tank and put a dent there. And uh, he did the same thing on this side. There's a very small, small thing there, but you can see it was from jacking it up on the frame and not having the jack entirely on the frame and partially on the gas tank. Again, it's not anything that would dictate you would ever replace that tank. Certainly not even noticeable once you're not underneath the car, but it is there. Uh, uh, regular springs in the back. The um, uh, 12 bolt rear, which is also indicative of a real SS car. So we got F41 suspension, heavy duty. <coughs> sway bar in the front, uh, sway bar in the back, boxed uh, swing arms, a big block Chevy, 12 bolt rear. Um, nice, nice car. I drove this car for a few days and it does nothing wrong. This thing talks to you. Fires right up, Nice, runs nice and clean. Uh, two and, I'm going to call them two and an eighth inch pipes instead of uh, a two and a half. They might even, nah, they're two and a quarter. Those are two and a half, this is two and a quarter. They're too big for two and an eighth. They're, uh, they're two and a quarter inch pipes. Uh, really good looking exhaust system on it. Transitions over to the stainless steel style uh, oval uh, slash cut tips that uh, they used in 1970 on these cars. This is a really great car. I drove it for a few days and I, I really couldn't find anything wrong with it. Uh, uh, runs well, drives well, does everything it's supposed to do. Uh, it's a great looking Chevelle. It's a great color combination. You can see the undercarriage is just as nice. Other than those few little superficial marks that I pointed out that it has, I can't tell you anything really negative about it. It definitely has a deep uh, um, 
transmission pan on it also, which is neat because you can just drop the oil out of it without having to pull the pan down and replace the screen. So if you change the oil periodically, theoretically that tranny will last you indefinitely. Uh, it's a great, great running car, a great undercarriage on it, and one of the best color combinations you could ever hope to find. Take a look at it. It's Hangsters and Daytona Beach Florida.